بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي uh, This is your brother Nawman Ali Khan uh, Hopefully with a, a reminder for myself and all of you on the upcoming Ramadan inshallah ta'ala And I wanted to share with you some insights from the Quran that I per particularly find very very powerful uh, All of you know, probably most of you know that in the Quran uh, the entire discussion on Ramadan and on fasting is actually encapsulated in one small section in Surah Al-Baqarah. This one passage deals with the subject comprehensively and you know the legal aspects of it and the spiritual aspects of it and all of it's done in this one concise passage and it's not mentioned anywhere else in the Quran which is very powerful. So we, when we look for guidance and advice about the month of Ramadan, obviously the logical first place to start is the Book of Allah and to turn to this passage. And in this passage, there are a few ayat that deal with, you know, some, sometimes the technicalities, you know, what days are you supposed to fast, until when, when does the fast begin, when does it end, uh, if you're sick, etc., the legalities of it. But on the other side, Allah Azza wa Jal also mentions this phrase that comes up, la'alla. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the word la'alla first, and then, inshallah, I'll share with you, the, you know, some really beautiful things that I find uh, fascinating. The word la'alla in Arabic actually means several things. It means, so that... So Allah will say something and at the end of his statement he'll say لَعَلَّكُمْ So that all of you such and such and such. So whatever Allah said, the purpose of it is after la'alla. Whatever guidance Allah gave us, like Allah gave us the month of Ramadan and at the end of giving us the month he says لَعَلَّكُمْ So that all of you and then he'll complete his statement. So it's like the purpose of Ramadan is being told. La'alla also means hopefully. Hopefully. In other words, I've given you this, hopefully you'll do that. Whatever, Allah, whatever guidance Allah has given us, in this case the month of Ramadan, the institution, the law of fasting, I've given this to you, hopefully you'll benefit from it in this way. In other words, I, did, I give, gave this to you for this purpose, and secondly, hopefully you'll attain that purpose. You know what that teaches us? It teaches us that just because you, you and I fast, that doesn't mean that we're going to attain the results we're looking to attain. There's a hope that we will, but it's not a guarantee. So the word la'allah does that that hopefully it will be attained. And la'allah also means perhaps. So there's a possibility that you will attain it, but it's not a guarantee. But since the meaning includes hope in it, raja in it, what that does for us is it makes us optimistic. On the one hand, there are no guarantees that in Ramadan, whatever Allah wants us to achieve, we will achieve. But at the same time, there's hope in all of us that has been placed. So with that brief introduction, let me share a couple of things with you. First thing Allah Azza wa Jal says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Those of you who have iman fasting has been made law on you, has been prescribed upon you, just like it was on people who came before you, so that you may attain taqwa, you may become conscious. So, you that, so that you may become conscious. You may become cautious and aware. Taqwa in Arabic is an urge to protect yourself, to watch out for trouble. It comes from the word wiqaya, which literally means protection. You know, like we say, وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ that part of that dua, that supplication actually means protect us from the punishment of the fire. So Allah says, you were given fasting just like the, it was given to people before you. Hopefully, you people will develop the urge to protect yourself. That's how I'm going to translate it first. Also, I gave this to you so that you develop the sense of protecting yourself. Then, chances are you will develop. There's a possibility you'll develop the sense, the, the urge to protect yourself. The first obvious question is protect yourself from what? Protect yourself from landing yourself in further trouble. Protect yourself from putting yourself in loss. From disappointing Allah. From disappointing the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From disappointing yourself. You know, you'll protect yourself from all these negative things and that's why fasting is given to you. So in this first video, I briefly want to talk to you about this idea of what's the relationship between fasting and taqwa from perhaps a psychological point of view and that, then we'll conclude. Maybe in another video, inshallah, I'll share with you some other insights about fasting in Ramadan. So, Allah, when, when He gave us fasting, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a physical thing, you feel it. Like, even if you're not a very spiritual person and you're fasting, you're going to feel the thirst, you're going to feel the hunger. It's a physical thing that you feel, right? And your, your stomach is screaming at you, it's telling you, feed me. Your throat is yelling at you, it's telling you, feed me, give me food, give me, thir give me water, right? So there's this battle going on inside you, a physical battle taking place inside you. And then it, there's, the only other entity inside you is your heart. And it's like your heart is in charge and it yells at your stomach and it yells at your throat and says, you watch it, not until Maghrib. We're not going to disobey Allah until Maghrib. We're going to protect ourselves from eating that food and drinking that drink until that time. 
So there's this war raging inside your body and your heart is in control. Your heart fears Allah and your heart says, no, we're not going to eat this, we're not going to drink that. I know fasting has to do with more, just, more than just eating and drinking, but I'm focusing on the physical aspects that at least everybody feels. Everybody feels thirst, everybody feels hunger when they fast, okay? Now, you know when, think outside of fasting, you're, you know, you're walking down the street and you have an urge, you know, some, some, one of you younger guys walking down the street, you see a woman pass by and your eye just goes towards her and you fail to lower your eyes. You know, there was an urge, just like your throat had an urge and your stomach had an urge, your eyes had an urge, they, they wanted to look. And but when, you're, when your stomach and your, your throat, they had an urge, your heart was telling them, stop. No, 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 you will, not, you will not quench your thirst. You will wait until the right time. But when your eyes look towards the wrong thing, is your heart in charge and is your heart telling you immediately, hey, don't even raise your eyes. Look the other way. Say astaghfirullah. Not until Allah gives you the halal option. Not until you get married. Not until Jannah. Not until later. When, what, what Allah has is better for you, even if you have to wait for it, even though your urge, your, your thirst, your appetite is very strong, even though that, that's the case, you have to stop yourself, you have to protect yourself. That doesn't happen for most of us. We don't stop. We just, we look, we feel bad later, then we go to Jummah and say, man, I'm really messed up, and you know, the cycle perpetuates. Ramadan is an opportunity, 30 days in a row, your heart is in charge, and your body is submitting. You know, the, the consciousness of Allah is alive, and your body's submitting. You know how, like Jummah is a good spiritual high, but then you have six days to get weak again. But what, what does Allah do in Ramadan? 30 days, you are winning this battle. And by the way, one of the f primary drivers that makes you lose this battle is shaitan and his marketing to you, right? He just keeps telling you, come on, come on, just a little sip. Just a little bit, just taste a little bit. Just look a little bit, just do a little bit. It's not that bad. At least you're not like that guy over there, you know? But all of that will disappear for you in Ramadan. If you go through a 30-day rigorous process like that, it's like your heart, that the command of the heart has been made strong, and the urges inside you have been made weak. They've been made weak. Now you're prepared truly to protect yourself when you're out there in the real world. So the last example I'll give you before, inshallah ta'ala, I, I share the rest with you in another session. You know police officers and like firemen, and military, these people when they train, they don't go actually into a burning building and train. They first go to like these training facilities and they do mock exercises and they get ready for the real thing and they go to shooting ranges and, ranges and they shoot, they practice before they hit the real thing, right? Before the real enemy strikes. It's kind of like that with Ramadan. 30 days Allah put shaitan away, right? And He allowed us to train ourselves to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And now that your training is done, you're not, not always going to be inside the training campus. The police officer is going to have to deal with the real dangers outside. The fireman is going to have to fight the real fire. Just like that, we're going to have to fight the real enemy, the shaitan, and his command over our nafs. We're going to have to engage in that real battle once that training is over. That's when we're going to need to learn to guard ourselves, protect ourselves, make our hearts these strong forts that shaitan cannot enter into. So that's, you know, it's the spirit of لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You've been given this institution of fasting so that you may be able to protect yourselves. May Allah Azza wa make all of us people that are able to protect themselves in and beyond Ramadan. And may Allah Azza wa make the training of Ramadan something that lasts in us and we, we are able to take the spirit of it and drive that in the rest of our lives. Barakallahu li wa lakum and Assalamu alaikum Qur'an Weekly. Assalamu alaikum Qur'an Weekly. The Prophet ﷺ told us, The one who points to something good is, gets the same reward as the one who did the good itself. Do me a favor and do all of yourselves a favor and share in the goodness if you benefited from these talks and these videos. Make it a point to share them with friends and family. And get the word out. This is such an awesome project. I really, really appreciate the effort Quran Weekly folks have made. And I pray that Allah blesses them even more and brings even more and more good from them. These kinds of efforts, you know, we, Allah tells us whoever doesn't thank the people hasn't thanked Allah. The, 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 the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ teaches us that. So we should do that. We should appreciate the effort that's being made here. And the best way to appreciate their effort is to help them get more reward and get yourself more reward at the same time by spreading the word, inshaAllah ta'ala. Thank you again. Wassalamu alaikum.